this is actually looking at hybrid ECM. My name is Paul Hampton, um, Director of Product Marketing here at Alfresco. Uh, we can make this interactive, so you've got, if you've got questions as we go through this, then please ask them. Uh, we don't have to wait to the end. What I wanted to do was look at what was hybrid ECM. When somebody asked me to, 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 to give a talk on hybrid ECM, I knew what our definition was. So I thought I'd actually go out to Google and search hybrid ECM. Um, and I searched for hybrid ECM, and, and Google, these are the results that came back from Google. Uh, the top three, as you can see, are our fresco links. Um, uh, because we are very um, proactive in talking about hybrid ECM. We think there's a, a lot of value in having this hybrid ECM capability, where you can have content on-premise, content in the cloud, and synchronizing. Um, I think the, the other reason th that we are so prominent with the Google is I'm not sure that any of the other vendors out there have the same capability. They talk about hybrid, they talk about syncing files, but they don't have the same application. The fourth entry here was actually a link to Wikipedia. So I thought, oh, perhaps that would tell me what hybrid ECM, the definition of hybrid ECM was. So I clicked on that, and this was a text. And it said, hybrid in some scenarios, companies find a hybrid composed of both assets. And, and I started reading that. I thought, that's boring. You can read the full thing here at, 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 uh, at, at, at Wikipedia. So I thought, rather than look at that, I'd talk about how some of our customers are using Alfresco One and are using Alfresco One with our hybrid ECM capability. And I'm going to look at four different use cases. The most obvious one is collaboration, about how I want to collaborate and work with people outside my organization. But there's also mobile enablement, remote office support, and also using the cloud as a content gateway. So what we could do is we'll actually look at those scenarios and walk through those and look at how hybrid ECM can actually help you solve those problems. So the first one, collaboration. We've recently done a study. Uh, we went out to 1,600 people. We asked a, um, uh, an organization um, in the UK to actually go out and interview people. Uh, we went out to eight countries. Uh, we interviewed 1,600 people, 800 from the business side and 800 from the IT side to understand what companies were seeing around collaboration. What problems were they having? What were they doing to solve those problems? What were the different perspectives? And we did it by looking at business users and IT so we can compare and contrast to see what were the views of the business users and how IT were actually delivering that. Um, and what we found was the number of connections, the number of people that people interacted with on an annual basis was very, very large. For a business user, the average was 1,888 different people that they needed to work with to get their job done. Uh, for IT decision makers, that was slightly less. There was also the interesting thing was that there was a huge variation on the different countries. So for the UK, they were mu much higher than that. Other countries, the number of external collaboration was much lower. But it, irrespective, there's a lot of people that you need to work with on a daily basis to allow you to get your work done. And they all expected those number of contracts to, to contacts to grow. Um, so they said over the next two years, they expected that, those number of contacts to go up on average to about 2,700 people. So you're going to see from 2013 to 2015, yeah, huge growth. So what are the problems that these, com these people are in these companies are facing, these b b business users? And to demonstrate this, I'm going to use the analogy of Sally. I've chosen Sally because it reminds me of my daughter. My daughter is 20, just leaving university, has grown up with technology. She's never known a world without the internet, never known a world without mobile phones and mobile access. She's used to using consumer tools like Facebook, like Dropbox, to share and collaborate. Well, now, Sally is actually coming into enterprise, and she's now being asked to use enterprise applications to do her job. Sally's in the marketing department, very much like myself. Sally's going to launch a new product. And should to do that, she has to work with a host of people. And these people outside of her organization. So she has press agencies. She may have one, or she have multiple press agencies spread around the world. She may be launching a global product, so therefore not only does she have a press agency in the UK, one in the US, but also one in France, one in Spain, one in Italy, one in Germany, possibly one in Japan. And then, depending on her product, she may need to work with an advertising agency. 
and say, well, we're going to put the video together, or should I use traditional media? Should I use print media, put in a magazine article, or should I have billboards at the train stations? And if it's going to be a video, well, possibly I need to get a media agency involved. The media agency is actually going to create the video, make sure it's a, a good video. They're going to orchestrate it, get actors, and, and put together the scripts. But during this job, she needs to collaborate with those people, and she's going to do that with documents. Um, and there's lots and lots of content. As she's going through this process, as she's getting ready, you know, there's press releases, there's drafts, there's presentations, there's scripts, there's rough cuts of the video. All of this stuff needs to be shared and collaborated on. Possibly she's getting invoices back from them so it needs payment. Now, Sally works within the organization, and down the bottom here, she's got an ECM solution. And this allows her to manage all that content that she's creating. Possibly she's collaborating with other people within her organization. They're working on this, they're working on the drafts, they're going through various revisions, and yes, she can workflow and share that content with them. But those other people are outside. And IT have put in a firewall. And they've done that to protect that information. They don't want people from outside coming in and accessing their internal systems, their ECM, ECM systems and other systems that they have in place. And Sally can go and say, well, I need to work with this advertising agency. Can you go to my LDAP or my Active Directory and add those users in so that they can come in and access the system? And IT are going to say, no, they can't do that. And they're going to say, well, can you give them VPN access? And they're going to say, no, we're not going to do that. We're here to protect this information and keep this information safe. So what happens is none of those guys can actually tunnel through that firewall and get access to this core content, this information that they need to collaborate on and work with Sally on. The result of that is Sally uses other means to collaborate. The easiest one is email. What she's going to do is she's going to go off and she says, oh, I've got my press release. Yes, we've done some internal work internally, um, but I've got a draft that I now want to share with the press agencies. So she takes it out of her ECM solution, she attaches it to an email, and then sends it out to the head of different press agencies. They all get those different copies, they update it, make changes, she gets eight copies back, she then sits down and works through all those different changes and merges them together, then she sends out a, a revised copy to the eight, they all look at it and then think, oh yeah, well, a little tweak here, a little tweak there, and she gets a copy back. So it goes backwards and forwards. Or she goes to see the media agency, and they show her a rough cast of the, the video. Now, she can't get that via email because it's a huge file. So she actually says, oh, I've got a USB stick. Can you put it on here for me? So they put it on there. Or she's working on a presentation, like the presentations we're working on here. Oh, can I put it on a USB stick? And I'll, I'll upload it, and I'll share it with my team back, back in the office. Or she might be using one of the consumer file sharing sites. So she may say, well, I've got a, I've got a Dropbox account. And it's interesting. I was. Uh, I was work, uh, working with, uh, I took a photograph yesterday of um, Hans from Gartner. Uh, I took a photograph of him and he said, oh, he said, I saw that photograph you tweeted about me on my presentation. He said, can I get a copy? I said, yeah, no problem, I'll, e I'll email it to you. Oh, he said, my work's email won't accept files that big. H here's my private email, can you send it to me via that? Or I could say, well, actually, I'll put it in a Dropbox folder and make it public for you. So people are now turning to Dropbox, they're turning turn to Google Docs, Google Drive, or iCloud, and saying, well, I've got this account. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a struggle for me to actually work with you via email, because uh, we're going to update the document. What I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll create a Dropbox folder, I'll make it public, and I'll put some of my content in there, and I'll put my files in there. Another piece of uh, information from this research that we did, um, we asked the, uh, the, 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 the people that we surveyed, um, how do you collaborate? Remember, working with all those people outside of your organization, 89% said that they actually collaborate via email. So they send documents via email and receive them back. This was surprising. 54% say they actually collaborate with people on a business level through their private email. Why are they doing that? Like the guy at Gartner, there's restrictions on your private email. It may not be big enough. It may not allow me to send large files. And therefore, well, actually, I'll go to my Google Mail because I know that Google Mail doesn't put those limits on me, and I can just send those documents that way. USB sticks and things like instant messaging. Um, if you want to get the results, there's a URL here. Um, just go to our website, and you'll find the results of this survey. Lots of infor interesting information there about, um, uh, about how people are collaborating and the problems that they're seeing. <coughs> So the result of Sally trying to launch this product 
is she now has all these information silos. So she's sent documents via email, and there's various different versions out there via email. She's got documents on various different uh, USB sticks. Can she remember which was the latest one that she, she created? You know, you've all seen this problem where people name them with dot one, dot two, dot three, put addresses, uh, uh, date, dates in there, what have you. Or it's out in Dropbox. Um, the problem with that is it's been revised there, but the CMO who wants to see that press release, he's looking at a version in here, and he doesn't realize that the version that the press agencies have been working on is out in Sally's Dropbox, and they've revised it, and they've made changes, and he's not seeing those changes. And this is driving the CIO mad. Just when he thought he got his arms around all the content, because he's put in an EC he's paid a fortune for that ECM solution, and he's put it in place, and he's put the servers in place, and the structure in place, and now he hopes he's capturing all of that content and managing it, because it's, it's important information, and some of that needs to flow into the records management piece, and he wants to have the latest version, and what's happened? Sally's broken those rules, and she's out there using Dropbox. I was at a, a Gartner event in London, um, and they were talking about collaboration and how, how companies are working. And one of the CIOs w stood up and said, how do I get Dropbox out of my organization? I've put in place measures to stop people using it so that they can't go through the firewall and they can't use Dropbox out in there. But when I did a survey, I still found 1,000 users, over 1,000 users, that have found a way past that. And they were still using Dropbox to share business information. And that's a problem. Um, another piece of research, oh, and it's not come up very well here, um, down here is the is URL, um, but the most frequently blocked, blacklisted or blocked application is Dropbox. Because enterprises are worried. Enterprises are worried that people are using those services to share and collaborate on business files. The problem is, Sally can do this quite happily, and she can put her documents in there, and can she work with the people that she needs to. But what happens when Sally leaves the organization? I've now got no link to that corporate information that's inside Dropbox. From a, a CIO's point of view, I've got no way of capturing that and bringing that information back under my corporate control. Say I want to reuse some of that information when we do it again, I may have a version inside my ACM, but it may not be the version that we actually used and the version that we actually released because Sally was using another tool to actually do that work. And this is where hybrid ECM solves that problem. Hybrid ECM allows you the combination of a private install. And I've said a private install because sometimes I say on-premise and people say, well, can I put this in my private cloud? You can have a private install. It's your version of Alfresco that you put somewhere. You put this inside on-premise, or you put it inside your private cloud, but it's your private install. It's your version of Alfresco that nobody else can access. How you manage it is up to you. We work in the cloud. We also work on-premise. But you also get a public cloud. So as part of a hybrid uh, Alfresco One subscription, you get hybrid cloud. So you get the right to install Alfresco here, but you also get a secure network in our, our public cloud offering. Uh, can I see, how many people are actually using Alfresco in the cloud? Only a couple of you, interesting. As part of that subscription, you get Alfresco in the cloud and the ability to synchronize files with that. So now let's move forward. How can we help Sally? So Sally's down here. The CIO has now made a better decision. He's deployed Alfresco on premise. And as part of that subscription, he also gets Alfresco in the cloud. Sally needs to work with somebody out there. And all she does is she synchronizes the files. So she selects a folder down here and says, this is my, project, my product launch folder. I want to work on that with these guys over here. I synchronize that. Very easy to do. Down here, this is the, the old interface, but I have a menu item here. So I select a document, and I come down here, and I say, I want to synchronize that to the cloud. The system then asks me, where do you want to put it? And these are all the different sites that I have in the cloud. Same user interface in the cloud as on-premise. I just navigate and say, yeah, I'm going to put it over here and, and, and put it there. And that's it. That's done. That content is now synchronized. I can then invite my external business partners in, the people that I need to work with, 
and I can give them access to those, those documents in the cloud. The nice thing is, if the press agency comes in here, and the French press agency says, this wording is not going to work in France, because of, you know, the, the terminology just doesn't work, we suggest you change the press release to this. They can update it, and they can add their version in the cloud. All those business partners, all the other media agencies, other the PR agencies, can now see that change. They get notified that somebody's made that change. They can go in and they can approve it or, or what have you. But it also, those changes are synchronized back on premise. So my chief marketing officer, who's following Sally's product launch, can now see, oh, one of the, the press agencies has modified the press release. Oh, I'll get an email with that notification. I'm going to go in and see what they've changed. I don't have to go to the cloud because it's synchronized back, and I get exactly the same version here as out in the cloud. So we always keep that, con that information in sync. Change it on-premise, change it in the cloud, doesn't matter. There's only one source of the truth. At the end of the project, Sally says, right, we're finished. I don't need to keep those videos out there. I don't need to keep the press release out there. I don't need to keep the product sheets out there. What I want to do now is unsync. And all she does is say, remove the sync and remove the content from the cloud. And what that tells is Alfresco to do is go out there and delete it from the cloud, and now the only copies exist on-premise. Again, depending on what content you're working on, things like contracts, if you're sending those for a review and approval, at some point in time, you may now want to say, this content's approved, now declare it as, as records. And again, one of the nice things we've got with 2.1 is in-place records and easy records management. So I can now have that automated so that somebody down here is working on a contract, working on that press release. Sally doesn't have to worry about file plans. Sally doesn't want to have to worry about declaring stuff and editing records management metadata. She just says, press release has been released. And that tells Alfresco to make that a record. And it then manages it for its life cycle. So Alfresco 1. provides an easier way to collaborate beyond the firewall. From an end user's point of view, I know I, I've all got all those business contacts. Remember the slide we had up in the, in the beginning where I had 1,888 business contacts that I need to work with on an annual basis? Well, now I've got an easy way of sharing content with them. I know when I'm working with business partners for Alfresco, I use Alfresco Cloud. I don't send stuff via email. I create a site in the cloud. I open it up to the partner, and I start sharing content with them that way. When I'm working with customers, with prospects, I do exactly the same. But the content is always under control. So from that CIO's point of view, he knows where his content is. It's on-premise, it's on his ECM solution, or there may be synchronized copies out in the cloud. But he knows that it's always in one of those two places. No longer is that content out on Sally's uh, Dropbox account or in Sally's Google Mail account, or in some other account. He's got control of that content and, and managing that. So we've looked at collaboration. Another area is mobile enablement. Remember this? Back in 2010, Steve Jobs on stage with an iPad, shows it everybody an iPad, and everybody says, iPad? That's an extra large iPhone. Why on earth would anybody want a tablet device? I've got a, I've got a laptop and I've got a phone. Why do I need a third device? You know, and everybody shot the idea down in flames. And I love this from Dilbert. So here we've got Dilbert working on his desktop computer. Asok is the youngster. He's come in, he's used to this technology, and he's saying, you know, what you, he's called his computer a granddad box. Uh, and he said, my, people of my generation, the youngsters, are used to using phones, used to using mobile devices, and we work on our tablets. And well, Dilbert says, well, yeah, but I've also got a laptop. And then Hassock says, I'll, t I'll text the 90s and let them know, just to show you that, you know, even these laptops now are seen as outdated. But some interesting stats. So from Steve Jobs standing up there three years ago and saying, this is the future, people are going to work on mobile devices, Huge growth in the number of mobile devices that have been sold, mainly tablet devices. First one here is from Yankee Group, showing the predicted growth from 2013 up to 2017. Interesting, Gartner expect the worldwide shipments of, uh, of tablets to reach 184 million units um, this year. This is an interesting one from IDC. 
by 2015, tablet devices are going to outsell PCs. People are going to be moving to a much more mobile device. So how do I access that content on my mobile device? So everybody's walking around with these, they're nice and shiny, and they're saying, you know, you know I've, I've got a, a, an Apple iPad, but you know, there's Android devices out there, and everybody's wanting to work with these and use them for business. It's much more intimate. You know, if I'm a salesperson, and I've got a presentation, and I'm meeting somebody over coffee in a coffee shop, it's much easier for me to go through the presentation on this rather than open up my laptop, and it's, it's, a, it's much more, you know, we can just sit through there, we can pay through there. If I'm a, a, a guy, a maintenance engineer, I'm going out to fix problems in the field, do I want to open up a laptop or can I just hold this in my hand and I've got the instruction manuals on here? How do people want to access their content? Well, we have a mobile app. Uh, both on uh, iOS and Android. Um, there's lots of sessions here talking about what we've done with Android. There's a new version of the Android de device come out. But you can access our fresco. So you can browse and you can search content. Uh, you can view that content. You can download it. You can upload it. Um, you can think. If there's a document that you, you think is really important, I'm that sales guy. I want the price list. I want the price list on my tablet all the time. And I want the latest price list. I can favorite it, and Alfresco will now synchronize it. So when I'm back in the office, this connects to the network, connects to Alfresco, and synchronize down any changes to the price list. So I can keep that content in sync. Uh, there's a note-taking app. So if I'm in a meeting, I can type in notes, save them, and then when I get back in the office, upload those to Alfresco. We also have MDM support. We've got a lot of companies that say, we love the idea of our road warriors using tablet devices, and we want those people out there using our content and having that, but we want it extra secure. So we've got integrations with people like Good Technology and Symantec, which will now put a wrapper around the Alfresco app to make sure that that content's even extra secure. Yes, we encode it natively as part of our app, but they now put an extra wrapper. And they do things like remote wipe. If I lo lose my iPad, possibly I've gone to the bar and I've left this on, the, on the, the bar and I've gone back to my room and I don't realize I've lost this, I can phone up my IT and through good technology, they can go through now and wipe that device, making sure that any content that I had on there is remotely wiped. They can also control what apps that I can open this in. So I may want to control, yes, you can open up um, presentations in Keynote, or no, I don't want you opening that, that type of content on your, on your app. But how do I access this content when I'm out the office? I'm a sales guy. I'm in a coffee shop. I'm talking to a customer. The customer likes the presentation. They says, I want more information. Have you got a data sheet on that? Have you got a present? Can you send me that presentation? Can you give me more information? Put together a proposal. This guy now has to think about VPN in through that firewall, that same firewall that was protecting Sally's information. I now have to configure VPNs on here and do that. Or possibly I've got consultants, consultants out in the field, and they're working, they're working on site. They're working on customer sites, but they need to get access to project documentation, and again, they need to be able to do that. Or as I said, these maintenance guys out there working in the field, they want to get access to drawings, they want to get access to specifications, to documentation that's going to help them do their job. Well, I can use the cloud to help me do this. So that sales enab enablement site, I can take sales and marketing information. And as part of the publishing process, I put it into a folder that's synchronized to the cloud. So when as I, as a marketing person, create a new data sheet, or I create a new corporate presentation, I just move it to a folder. And it's automatically synchronized out. The sales guys now working on their iPads can get access to this. Case files and instructions, I can synchronize those out there for the, the, the service guys. Again, they don't have to worry about uh, VPN and tunneling through those. So long as they've got internet access, they can get access to the case logs and history files about the piece of equipment that they're working on. And the consultants, they can get access to project documentation. So they can suck all this information out, but more importantly, they can push content back through this gateway. So if I'm a sales guy and I'm with that customer and I've given him the data sheet and he likes what he's talked about and I've got an order form, an electronic order form, on my iPad. I can fill that in, agree the terms and conditions with him, and then post that back through a site in the cloud, have that synchronized, and then have an automatic workflow start that starts processing that order. Or the service engineer completes the service log. He's gone off, he's looked at 
uh, a wind vane, he's looked at a piece of equipment, uh, electrical equipment, whatever it happens to be, he's completed a service log, sends that document, posts it again up into the cloud, has that synchronized back, and that becomes part of the record for the piece of equipment you're maintaining. The consultants doing their timesheets, updating product records. They've, they've had a, a meeting, they've talked about the, the project, he's written a minutes document, and again, he can post that. Possibly it's a global project. He's working with other consultants in other countries. He wants to put the minutes documents in here, and now all those other consultants in those other countries can access that document. But again, it's synchronized back for long-term retrieval. That's two examples of how you could use hybrid ECM. The next one is an interesting one. I was talking to uh, a customer, and the customer um, run a hotel chain. And they want people in remote offices, in remote hotels, to get access to corporate information. Um, and they were struggling with this. So let's look at this. So I've got my headquarters somewhere in Europe. And we're running Alfresco. So that drum thing is meant to represent Alfresco. But I've got remote offices. And possibly I'm a manufacturing company, and I've got remote factories as well that are manufacturing goods. Now, typically what you're going to say is, well, I'll, actually, I'll just use the net, network and allow those guys to come back in. Yes, VPN's easy because I've got networks here and it's all set up. We all look like the same company, and therefore I can just get back into my Alfresco system on premise. One Alfresco, one source of truth, and make that easy. But there are issues. Um, this comes back to, um, like most of the people from Alfresco, I used to work for Documentum many years ago. And at that time, I was working with a, an oil company. And one of the problems they have was they, they were headquartered in Texas. And they have remote um, drilling plants throughout the world in different locations. And some of those, they just couldn't get the network to give coverage to get access to that content. And they wanted some way of replicating standard operating procedures, important documents that help those guys keep that oil rig running. And how could they get them out to those far-flung locations? And we looked at it, and at the time, the only way of doing that was putting them on tape and sending them through the post. And then their guys would unload those and install them in their local system. So network latency in some remote locations is not always the best. It's going to be slow. I'm not going to get the connection speed that I need to download those documents in time. Or network reliability. What happens if my network connection goes down and breaks, then those remote offices can't get access to that. Now, in that drilling example, for an oil company, having an oil rig that can't get access to the latest standard A operating procedures is a really important problem. So what they'll do, content replication. So Alfresco, we have the ability to allow you to put a remote Alfresco server in those remote locations and then replicate content. It's a feature of Alfresco, so I can take this content and say, OK, it's going to go out to my North Atlantic. I can control when it does that. I can look at times when the bandwidth is not going to be an issue, and I can replicate that content out to those remote locations when it's needed. But there are problems with that. Remote administration. I've now got an Alfresco in those remote locations. And to manage that, I'm going to have to have an admin person that's managing that alpha install installation of Alfresco. They're going to have to do the administration, the database backup, the backup of the files, and make sure that everything's working. And there's cost. I've now got to have an extra server there. I've got to have extra Alfresco licenses. And there's an extra cost of doing that. So what this company decided to do was use the cloud. And what they're now doing is they're saying, well, here's my head office. And I know what information that these guys need. And what I can do is I can just synchronize that content. Again, remember, it's a hotel chain. So what they're doing, all their standard operating procedures, all the documents that the, the hotels need on a, on a daily basis to keep the hotel running, they can just take those and synchronize those up into the cloud. In my example here, I've got factories. Possibly I've got you know, production instructions. Possibly I've got standard operating procedures I want to go there. And again, I can synchronize those to the cloud. And now people can just access Alfresco through that cloud. This particular company feels that, that it's much more performant for them to, uh, uh, for these remote offices to uh, 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 in access Alfresco installed on top of Amazon 
and access the content that they, they need and drive it that way. The last one is Cloud Content Gateway. The world is moving to the cloud. Now, a lot of companies are moving their applications out onto the cloud. So whether it be ERP, enterprise resource planning, customer relationship management, HR, travel planning, financial processing, call center, or marketing office automation. Lots of people are using these tools and cloud-based tools to start managing part of the, the, the process. And again, we heard from our Simon, our keynote speaker, that it makes business sense. Why do I need to manage my CRM solution when I can buy that as a service? That's now a commodity. Marketing automation is a commodity. I know what I need. I'm just going to buy that service and use it in the cloud. I don't want to manage it. I don't want to worry about it. So again, I've got my ECM system down here, and I've got all my different business applications out in those different clouds, disparate systems provided by different, set, different providers. The problem is I'm also creating content out there. That might be important content. So I'm a sales guy. I work in CRM, Salesforce. And I'm putting contracts in there. I'm putting in presentations. I'm putting other important information that, about the customer that I'm working with, about the opportunity. As I'm going through, I'm collaborating with people, and I'm putting content in there. HR, possibly using an HR tool. And that HR tool is doing my uh, uh, annual employee reviews. And we create a document. We go through 60 review. I work with my manager. We agree on this. And we document it. And we put the document into the cloud. Possibly I'm using financial systems out there. My invoices and payment terms are all going out through this financials document. The problem is, I really want some of this content back here. I want to manage this content for long term. So if I'm agreeing terms and conditions with the, the um, sales guy, and he's doing that through a contract, and he's putting that contract, and he's using contract uh, CRM solution to manage that contract through its life cycle. Actually, I want to bring that back, because at some point in time, I want to declare that as a record because I have a corporate responsibility to make sure that I record all those obligations that we've agreed in that contract and manage that for the term of the contract. Well, the HR record, I need to be able to make sure that that becomes part of the uh, employee's record set, because in here I've got their contract, and I've got their payment notices, and I've got everything else managed inside my ECM, but I've now got itsy bitsy parts out on that HR system. And again, with my financials. I'm now relying on people going out and remembering to go out and suck that information, bring it down, and update it into the ECM solution when they've completed it. They may be using these documents out here as transactional documents, but how do they then bring that down? What we can do is actually use our fresco in the cloud as a gateway to bringing that information in. Um, we've just launched, or we've launched some a little while ago, are connected to Salesforce. So now your sales guys are working in the tool that they really want to work in. So the sales guys are cr working on their opportunities. And they're focused on Salesforce because that's where their pipeline is. That's where their opportunities are. That's where they're collaborating with other people within the sales team to make sure that they can close this deal. And they're uploading documents. So as they're working, they're, they're getting questions from the customer. They're responding to those. And they're tying all of those documents to that opportunity inside Salesforce. And the sales manager can see this, and he can see how those deals are moving forward, and he can give advice about how he can move those deals into closure. But the nice thing is, with the link from Salesforce, we can now take that content and bring that content into our Fresco in the cloud. So when I add that contract, what's actually happening is that contract gets synchronized to a folder inside the cloud. And now I can then say, right, synchronize that from the cloud back on premise. And now I can start a workflow. And I can start a workflow and have somebody in legal, possibly they're working in Alfresco Workdesk, review that. Remember, they, they've got Workdesk, which is their interface into, into the uh, Alfresco piece. They get that contract. They review that. They make changes. And again, those changes can be synchronized back out to Salesforce so that the, that the sales guy can see that there's some problems with the agreement that we've put in that place. I may need to go back to the customer. He puts in a new version. Again, that goes through, and we can manage that whole process. It gives people that don't have access to Salesforce access to any of those documents associated with that opportunity, associated with that deal. 
But we have an API that surrounds Alfresco in the cloud. So there's nothing stopping people to think, actually, I can take this one step further. And I'm using a financial application. And I can build that link using CMIS and using our cloud API just to create a link between that cloud application and synchronize that content through Alfresco in the cloud back on premise. So I can start capturing my HR documents when they're completed and approved. I can catch, capture my travel documentation or my financials. So what I've shown is four areas where I know our customers are using Alfresco One. The easy one is collaboration. It's a no-brainer. If you need to work with people outside your organization, you can put our content into Alfresco on-premise. So you want to synchronize that, that work with the people outside, and you can do that. You may also think about mobile enablement. Do you have a mobile workforce? We'll create a sales enablement site in the cloud and have that, that sales information synchronized from on-premise out to the cloud and then say to people, all you need to do is log in via your mobile device, use your mobile app, synchronize the content, and you can download that content. Remote office support. Do you have a couple of people in remote locations where it doesn't make sense to go through installing a, another Alfresco and making sure that you have that replication. Possibly it's a managed office where you've only got two or three people. We'll tell them, we'll support your office by putting that content into the cloud. And now they can dial into the cloud and get access to that information. They can update it and put updates back into the cloud, which then flow through the cloud and synchronize back on premise with Alfresco. Or use Alfresco as a cloud content gateway. Start looking at some of those other software as a service applications that you're thinking out there. Think about what content is being managed there, and do I want that content being managed by those other applications? Because not everybody in my organization has got access to Salesforce. Not everybody in, in my organization has got access to my financial system. Possibly I want to start flowing that content back through Alfresco in the cloud and bringing that on-premise. Hybrid ECM is a reality today. Um, we launched it with Alfresco 4.1 about a year ago, um, and it's been, been out there for, for, for some time. I know that we make extensive use of it when, with inside Alfresco. Uh, I use it for collaboration, so I work with a whole host of people. I mean, marketing, so I work with a whole host of people outside when we want to have things like graphics done. All the graphics for this event were done by an external agency we would synchronize that content to the cloud, invite that person in, they would up the, upload the graphics. We can then review those on premise, send back feedback, and do that. It's a tool to help you regain control of that content, important content, whether that content is sharing with uh, business partners or whether that content is being managed and stored in other systems out there, other software as a solution. Um, I'd also be interested to know if you are using Alfresco One, if you are using hybrid, then how are you using it? If you're not using hybrid, if you're an Alfresco One customer, then you get it as part of your package. I'd love to know why you're not using it. Uh, what's holding you back? Is it IT saying you can't use it? Are there, uh, are there other concerns in there? That's the end of the formal presentation. I'd like to open it now for questions. Uh, if there are any questions, then please fire away. If there are no questions, I say thank you very much for coming, and uh, we can move on to the next session. Any questions? Question at the back there. Hi. Uh, good. Thank you. Hi, Thomas. Uh, there is a question about the um, cloud hosting, because today uh, our first cloud hosting is on cloud, and we have some use cases where it could be relevant to have the cloud and private clouds for some customers. Do you have any answer for that? Yeah, so we, um, at the moment, we use Amazon, and our cloud infrastructure is installed on an Amazon server somewhere in North America. Um, I've no idea where. I'm sure the engineers would tell me where it is, but they must really have to shoot me for security reasons. Um, the content that you upload is encrypted. So when you upload it, it's encrypted, and we use encryption algorithms to make sure that if somebody did break in and just look at the file system inside an Amazon server, they could not read your files. They would, they would have to try and decode those. But for some people, that still isn't secure, and there are some restrictions. So if that is the case, then I would say there's still lots of documents that you could use Alfresco for managing. 
marketing, you know, sales and marketing material. That's most probably stuff that you're going to publish to your website anyway at some point. So it's not that sensitive. So you can still use it. So there is that, remember we had that 20, 60, 20 rule. There's still content that you can use Alfresco in the cloud for managing and synchronizing with, with your partners. Again, you need to put down some, some business rules about what content is sensitive and needs to be kept on premise. What content can you actually synchronize out to the cloud? Having said that, we do have customers, and I've just been working with um, a, um, uh, a, US, uh, uh, a UK government agency in London that love the concept of hybrid. Uh, the reason they love the, the concept of hybrid is the records managers are scratching their head, saying that we cannot get to grips with the records because we've got a system here for records management, but none of our users will use it. They're all out here using other systems on the web to share and collaborate content. They're putting in place uh, two cloud imp implementations. One is going to be in a private cloud where they will keep all their content extra secure, extra sensitive information. Again, the UK government got different levels of, of confidentiality, and they're going to keep that content there. But they're also going to put another version of Alfresco in, it's, a, it's their own private hosted cloud environment, but it's one that they're willing to open up to their business partners because they have more control over that. And both of those infrastructures will be managed by themselves, or their, their hosting company, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in the UK. So now they can get the benefits of this hybrid approach where they take content and they say, I need to work on this with another department, or I need to work on this with a, a consultant or a meta expert or somebody from university, and I can share that content out into the, our own cloud environment. We can collaborate on it. We'll keep that content in sync. But they're using this hybrid model, but they're driving their own hybrid system. So yes, they've got security concerns, and yes, they're going to actually build their own hybrid infrastructure to do that. Other questions? No? In that case, thank you very much for attending. If you're too embarrassed to ask questions, I'm always around. <laughs>